and welcome to this episode of Quake Down. This is the third video in the Advices and Queries deep dive session. I've created a playlist on, on the channel, so if you want to go through them all, you can. Um, but in this one, we're dealing with Advices and Queries, the third section, going from number 17 to number 30. Um, I'm going to change how I do it a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through them all in order. I'll give a bit of a pause in between for maybe a bit of um, reflection. And then I'm just going to pick out the bits that spoke to me, that speak to me, that have spoken to me in the past uh, in my life as a Quaker and um, really try and understand these ones because there are some big ones in these and this. Like th there are, if you're going to quote any part of the advices and queries, quite a lot of them are going to come between numbers 17 and 30. So number 17, do you respect that of God in everyone? though it may be expressed in unfamiliar ways or be difficult to discern. Each of us has a particular experience of God and each must find the way to be true to it. When words are strange or disturbing to you, try to sense where they come from and what has nourished the lives of others. Listen patiently and seek the truth which other people's opinions may contain for you. Avoid hurtful criticism and provocative language. Do not allow the strength of your convictions to betray you into making statements or allegations that are unfair or untrue. Think it possible that you may be mistaken. Number 18. How can we make the meeting a community in which each person is accepted and nurtured, and strangers are welcome? Seek to know one another in the things that are eternal. Bear the burden of each other's failings and pray for one another. As we enter with tender sympathy into the joys and sorrows of each other's lives, ready to give help and to receive it, our meetings can be a channel for God's love and forgiveness. Number 19. Rejoice in the presence of children and young people in your meeting and recognise the gifts they bring. Remember that the meeting as a whole shares a responsibility for every child in its care. Seek for them, as for yourself, a full development of God's gifts and the abundant life Jesus tells us can be ours. How do you share your deepest beliefs with them, while leaving them free to develop as the Spirit of God may lead them? Do you invite them to share their insights with you? Are you ready both to learn from them and to accept your responsibilities towards them? Number 20. Do you give sufficient time to sharing with others in the meeting, both newcomers and long-time members, your understanding of worship, of service, and of commitment to the society's witness? Do you give a right proportion of your money to support Quaker work? Number 21. Do you cherish your friendships so that they grow in depth and understanding and mutual respect? In close relationships, we may risk pain as well as finding joy. When experiencing great happiness or great hurt, we may be more open to the working of the spirit. Number 22. Respect the wide diversity among us in our lives and relationships. Refrain from making prejudiced judgments about the life journeys of others. Do you foster the spirit of mutual understanding and forgiveness which our discipleship asks of us. Remember that each of us is unique, precious, a child of God. 23. Marriage has always been regarded by friends as a religious commitment rather than a merely civil contract. Both partners should offer with God's help an intention to cherish one another for life. Remember that happiness depends on an under understanding and steadfast love on both sides. In times of difficulty, remind yourself of the value of prayer, of perseverance, and of a sense of humour. 24. Children and young people need love and stability. Are we doing all we can to uphold and sustain parents and others who carry the responsibility for providing this care? 25. A long-term relationship brings tensions as well as fulfilment. If your relationship with your partner is under strain, seek help in understanding the other's point of view and in exploring your own feelings, which may be powerful and destructive. Consider the wishes and feelings of any children involved and remember their enduring need for love and security. Seek God's guidance. If you undergo the distress of separation or divorce, try to maintain some compassionate communication so that arrangements can be made with a minimum of bitterness. Number 26. Do you recognize the needs and gifts of each member of your family and household, not forgetting your own? Try to make your home a place of loving friendship and enjoyment, where all who live or visit may find the peace and refreshment of God's presence. Number 27. Big one. Live adventurously. 
When choices arise, do you take the way that offers the fullest opportunity for the use of your gifts in the service of God and the community? Let your life speak. When decisions have to be made, are you ready to join with others in seeking clearness, asking for God's guidance and offering counsel to one another? Number 28. Every stage of our lives offers fresh opportunities. Responding to divine guidance, try to discern the right time to undertake or relinquish responsibilities without undue pride or guilt. Attend to what love requires of you, which may not be great busyness. Number 29. Approach old age with courage and hope. As far as possible, make arrangements for your care in good time, so that an undue burden does not fall on others. Although old age may bring increasing disability and loneliness, it can also bring serenity, detachment and wisdom. Pray that in your final years you may be enabled to find new ways of receiving and reflecting on God's love. And then finally, number 30. Are you able to contemplate your death and the death of those closest to you? Accepting the fact of death, we are free to live more fully. In bereavement, give yourself time to grieve. When others mourn, let your love embrace them. So I just want, uh, yeah, so now I just wanted to kind of go through some of those, some of those um, advices and queries and just kind of think, well, what do they mean? How, do, how have they affected me? I mean, I couldn't help it. Number 27 is um, a fun favourite, uh, I think, of many Quakers in Britain. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if this one is in other yearly meetings as well. Please let me know. But live adventurously is very, um, is very important to me. Um, I... I see that as a challenge um, to not live mundanely, to try when, you know, you kind of just want to lie in front of the television or have a lie or whatever, try and think, well, is that living adventurously? And what would that look like? And obviously that's not just like going on adventures, going out and, you know, exploring the world or whatever, though it could be, it could be do something that's different, challenge yourself. It's actually also, it's this this um ad advice is also very important for this channel as well um the uh living adventurously grant which i do want to do a separate video about but as it's come up i'll mention as well is available to young quakers young is uh, a very loose term it goes up to um 35 i think um and it's a grant that's available from quakers in britain for young people to do something to do something active with their faith so they provide grants in order for you to um slot so whatever's spoken to you so i um a couple of years ago now i filled out the very easy form it's not straight not it's not difficult at all you need to have a a, a sponsor and i don't know if they call them that but you, you basically need to have another quaker to say yes he is a quaker he does come to meetings and so on and then i explained what i wanted to do and i said that i wanted to start a quaker youtube channel um and i explained what the kind of things i wanted to cover and i explained the kind of equipment things that i would need in order to make that happen and got accepted and so living adventurously doesn't mean as i said going outside it could be doing something that helps you serve god um, helps getting, uh, in my case, helps get, get, hoping to get people talking about Quakerism. So I think 27 is uh, very important to me and very important to this channel as well. So um, I will do a whole video on that because I, I really want young Quakers, or up to 35, um, to be aware of this. So with number 17, for example, I think this is something which I have talked about quite a lot um, and uh, is something that is quite important to me in part of Quakerism is it's, di it's the diversity and the fact that just because I, and I've said, and I've made this very clear that I use very Christian language when I talk about Quakerism, but I know many Quakers who don't. And when they give ministry, it's very different to how I give ministry. And, but that's exactly the point. You know, if I've been, if, the light has asked me to give a message. It knows that I'm going to say it in a particular way. If it's not from, if it's, if it's, you know, given to someone else, it's because it's how they need to say it. And that's what needs to be said. It's, you know, I, it's sort of like the light choosing the best medium in which to uh, speak uh, the, the message that needs to be out there. I think what's really important though, is that uh, when we are listening, we are doing this sort of double listening. We're listening to the actual words, but then we are also analyzing underneath that okay 
there's a lot of language which I don't really understand there or maybe don't agree with personally, but what what's what's being said? What can I get from that? And I think that's really important. We need to be open for that. As a, as a society which has such broad beliefs, we have to be able to listen and listen again. We can't just take everything on face value all the time. Um, if I... It, or if I or someone else from the meeting quote something from the Bible, uh, an atheist might turn around and say, well, I'll just turn off them. But actually, what's the message there? And think about how, okay, how, what does that mean for me? How, how does that affect me either analytically or even just gut? Because sometimes you can hear something and it can take you completely by surprise and that thought stays with you and it builds up a your own um, a, a reaction to that, which you might not have expected. So be open to that. Um, and that last bit at the end of the 17, think it possible that you may be mistaken. I love it. I think, you know, you are, you are not the, the you are not, you don't know everything. Um, think it possible that you be, may be mistaken. Uh, it reminds me there was a, uh, there was a thing on Twitter, a couple, maybe it was last year. I can't remember. Um, it was a picture of the London eye and it was, uh, it was all lit up in purple and someone quoted, obviously it's a big circle. Um, uh, and someone quoted, oh gosh, it looks like the Quakers have taken over London Not because it looks like the Quaker in Quakers in Britain symbol. Um, and that's all they said. Looks like Quakers have taken over London. And then at the end, he put AQ 17. Nice little there. Uh, I don't think he was even a Quaker. So I think that was really like good knowledge. Um, think it possible that you may be mistaken. So yeah, then a lot, a lot of this is about children. And I think that's really lovely. I, I, I wasn't raised a Quaker. I wish I was. It sounds, it sounds really lovely. The, the, I think Quake, the Quaker understanding of children reminds me of a lot of how Jesus treated children. He, he treated them with utter respect and, um, uh, and took them very seriously. Um, and I think that can be lost sometimes and i love that quakers with their children give them an, an opportunity to take part actively in the meeting now in my local meeting there aren't any children i don't have any of my own um and uh but so it's kind of um theoretical in my mind how that could play out but as i understand it that when there is a children's meeting they often they don't spend the whole meeting with the grown-ups they do they go away and they might do like a bit of their own contemplation which might be a bit more vocal and might be a bit more hands-on but then i think the idea is that they do often come back and then spend some time with the adults and they can give ministry as well and isn't that just so lovely um i i could i i really hope that when i if, you know when i do have children that i can give them that because it must give them such confidence and such a a sense of being worthwhile and being listened to and being respected on an equal footing in that setting with 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 their with, with their with their grown-ups and um i think that's lovely I, I i i would really like to see a children's meeting for worship i can imagine it might be a bit dicey sometimes but i think it's the right idea and we should absolutely involve children in our meeting Ooh, money um yeah do you give a right proportion of your money to support Quaker work? I, I, I think, you know, we, we obviously at the moment with the cost of living crisis, uh, you know, the right proportion is, should be underlined there. I mean, maybe you can't give the same amount as you do or used to. That's fine. You know, that this is, I think it's important because we need to be able to support society with that money is used for so many different things I'll come to, on to that in a little bit as well it's really vital that we have that as i said these grants and things they don't come from nowhere and so it is important that we do but the right proportion is really if the right proportion at that time is nothing then that is absolutely fine but i think we have to always be aware that we are a society that works for works with each other and works for each other as well and so we do have a responsibility to try and help support people, especially if they're in financial need and you find yourself in the position to give something. But the right proportion is the most important thing. Yeah, so Quaker marriage comes in there as well. Quaker marriage is very interesting. Um, I've not been to one, but 
I, it sounds really fun uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, a couple, there are a couple of videos. I'll try and put them in the link, uh, link in, in links below um, about what to expect from a Quaker wedding. Um, my best, my favorite one is from a, a Quaker vlogger who she doesn't she does quake she does um vlog about quakerism but she mainly vlogs about disability and fashion and things like that uh but she's really fun to follow um that's jessica kelgren fazard i'll put a, a, a link somehow to to her page as well do give her a follow she does talk about quakerism she does talk oh she, she talks about lgbtq um uh rights she talks about disability she talks about fashion so it's quite diverse as well as quakerism every now and again so do give her a follow uh, a, a follow she's she's really cool but she's got a good video on when she got married to um to her wife um in in um in a quaker wedding it looks very different to maybe how we would do wed you do your normal wedding um it is effectively another meeting for worship so there is silence people stand up and say things about the couple I, I, I it it looks really cool another thing that I think that's very interesting about a Quaker wedding is that it can take place at any time anywhere which in the UK at least is very unheard of I think it's only Quakers and Jews who can marry this way so normally if you're going to get married in a civil service or in an Anglican church well obviously if it's an Anglican church you need to be in a church but um if you are normally just getting married either in a civil service say so state service you have to there are loads of weird precautions that you have to get married it has to be in a building with four walls and a roof and it can only be between between certain times and on certain date i don't know i think days is fine mm, not sure but there are all these weird rules in quick for some reason i i think that some quaker probably really you know campaigned hard for it i don't know but quaker, quakers can get married at any time anywhere so if, if you want to really get married on a well maybe not a cliff at midnight i mean you could if it quake i wouldn't recommend it but you get the idea you know you can get married at any time outside um if you want to which again in the uk why on earth would you want to do that so yeah quaker weddings go to one yeah and then in 26 i if my house is like this then life's good isn't it you know i love this try to make your home a place of loving friendship and enjoyment where all who live or visit may find the peace and refreshment of god's presence i you know who doesn't want a house like that i think that's a lovely um it's obviously not always gonna happen is it but i think that's really nice um and something certainly to aim towards what's an advice number 28 holds i mean i've talked about 27 i'm skipping it um what that's that's really cool attend to what love requires of you um, I see this quote again and again. It was in the epistle, paraphrased, but it was in the epistle from a Britain Yearly Meeting from 2022. I think it was said what love and justice came in there. Yeah, attend to what love requires of you. I think it's really good because it centers you on the right path. You know, it's not about how do I get more money or what do I do to make other people happy necessarily um, or um, what do I do for my own private gain. You know, the, if love is your is your is your guiding star there then i think your decisions will be right and if you think right okay what does love require of me in this situation i think if you follow that you, you're never going to be far wrong <laughs> yes and then we get death good um yeah I, I think you know we have we have to think about it i have been to a quaker memorial and again like a meeting for worship a bit more structured so it's not extemporaneous people have prepared something and obviously in quaker memorials as well you, you are going to be dealing like I, I say i can imagine also in quaker weddings you are going to be dealing with people who aren't actually who aren't quakers and so don't know so it does need to be a bit maybe a bit more managed than a normal meeting for worship but we have to talk about it and because again it's a great it's it's a huge part of our existence we can't avoid it and so we have to talk about it so are you able to contemplate your death and the death of those closest to you memento mori and all things like that quakers don't tend to have much of a belief in um or tend to discuss not because it's a belief but um they don't tend to talk about what happens after death too much so that means they can avoid uh, avoid no that means that in terms of theology which quakers don't really like doing um 
they don't have to get so bogged down in who goes to heaven, who goes to hell, what is hell, what is heaven, um, is everyone saved, If is everyone not, you know, we can, those questions which, you know, other, other Christian denominations, you know, get all worked up about, Quakers just ignore. I've been to two Quaker memorials, and they're lovely because it's about the person's life, it's about, it's a celebration, and I think, you know, you hear that in funerals and stuff, but I think that was, I, I think I really felt that, you know, everyone was given time to say something. Again, it wasn't like in other funerals that I've been to where there's a strict order, you speak now, you speak now, you speak now, and everyone else just sit and watch. You know, everyone can have their say, everyone can say things, and there's um, respectful silence in order to bridge that. Uh, it's also the only time really that I've heard music in um a Quaker meeting for worship as well, which was interesting. I, I think you know it it fits in with the it fits in with 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 the with the tone of of a of a memorial a lot more. Oh, big one. As, as well, I said it was going to be. Um, so the the next one that we do that the the last one that we're doing is um, unless you want to do it all in Welsh, which is also in um, the um, the uh, Quaker faith and practice, which I think is great go Welsh. But the next one goes from 31 all the way to the end uh, to uh, 42 and then the controversial non-numbered um, advice and query right at the end. I will include this. Doing a whole video on just that one would be useless. So the next one is taking us all the way from 31 to 42 and the special one. So please stay tuned. I don't know when I'm going to do that but Stay tuned, stay watching, it'll all be on the play, uh, playlist and um, I'll, obviously you'll get, hopefully get a notification. So if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because then how do you know when you're next going to get your next fix of um, advices and queries, deep dives? But thanks very much for watching. I really do want to know what, because this one's huge. This one, it, like, there's, there's, this is about life. And so I want to know how, you know, these are the ones that have affected me and I've talked about my feelings of this, but I'm a person in my own box and my own bubble, restrained by who I am, um, but, and where I am in my life. But what about you? Where have these, how have these helped you? How have these proved maybe difficult for you? Uh, up for a discussion, I really want to, as I said, I really want this to be a Quaker discussion, not just not just me talking. So please let me know what you think in the comments and I'll respond and let's have a chat. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do click on the thumbs up button and do check out some of my other videos about Quakerism in the UK. If you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, please do remember to subscribe as well. It really helps. Thank you.